Good morning. It's Pamela Holly. I'm founder and CEO of Universal Giving, and you're listening to The 360 Entrepreneur with Jan Ilonga. This is episode 194, and today we talk about the power of social entrepreneurship. Here we go. Welcome to The 360 Entrepreneur Podcast, the show for entrepreneurs and small business owners who dream big and want to do bigger. Join some of the world's top entrepreneurs, internet marketers, and best-selling authors as they share their inspiring stories, their struggles, and give actionable tips that will help you build, grow, and promote your online business. Here's your host, Yanni Lunga. Hi, and welcome to episode 194. The countdown to the 200 episode mark keeps going. Today, we don't talk about business growth strategies. We don't talk about lead generation like we did last week with Shen Milach, for example. Nothing like that. Today, we talk about something that is so meaningful and it's so important for you as a person, first and foremost, as well as an entrepreneur, as a business person. In this episode, we're joined by Pamela Holly, and she has some interesting things to share on social entrepreneurship, its power, and the importance of giving back. The show notes for today's episode are over at yanilunga.com for a slash episode 194. All right, here is the interview with Pamela Holly from universalgiving.org. In today's episode, we are joined by somebody who's doing so much. You'll understand more about what I mean by that in a second. She's the founder and CEO of Universal Giving, an award-winning nonprofit that helps people donate and volunteer with top-performing vetted organizations all over the world. She is an award winner, as I said. She's an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, an actor, a speaker, and she's also been featured on the TV show Billions Rising. And you guessed it, she's here with us. It's with great pleasure that I welcome on the show, Pamela Holly. Pamela, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you. Good morning, Jan. Good morning. It's it's so nice to have you here. And the first question I have to ask you has to do with you as a person, with you as a woman, as an entrepreneur, as a philanthropist. Because I said, you do quite many different things. So how do you manage to combine all these things? I mean, philanthropy, acting, writing, speaking, interviews such as this one. You know, Jan, I'm very blessed. I feel very grateful. I have a lot of, um, you know, peaceful kind of positive energy that way. And so very grateful to have a full life. And I think the most thing that I've really just been focused on is how can my life be of service? Mm -hmm. And so that has to do with philanthropy and, and giving back and helping people donate and volunteer to the best opportunities out there. And it also has to do with helping people understand their best life pathway. And so the writing, the speaking, all of that helps people to find their right journey and find their right calling. And for me, that's equally as important. You touch upon something interesting and that obviously is at the foundation or at the base of universal giving, because you talked about feeling blessed, wanting to give back. And we said it, you are the founder and CEO of Universal Giving. So could you take a moment, Pamela, to tell everybody a little bit more about what Universal Giving is and what it does? Yes, I think, you know, for us, that bread and butter is the marketplace of giving and volunteering, that real sincere sense of giving where you can give $10 to help build a well in Haiti, or go give $25 to help clean up a river in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. It's really all over the world, Jan. And the point is to get it to the simplest, clearest projects possible that are having impact and that you can really give your 100% because we don't take a cut on that donation. So when you're giving that $10, that full $10 goes directly to the project on the ground in Tanzania. And that's always been the case with universal giving, mm -hmm. and it always will be, and been a very, very important part of our mission. So our point is to make giving as trustworthy, as clear, as simple, and as impactful as it possibly can be. I love it. And obviously, like in every episode, you're going to find the link to everything Pebble and I talk about, including the site of universal giving, universalgiving.org, in the show notes. And Pamela, I want to ask you, about social entrepreneurship. I mean, by telling us what universal giving is and does, you kind of touch upon this a little bit, but why do you think 
for everybody who's here with you and I, whether they are starting their entrepreneurial journey, they've been in business for quite some time. Why is social entrepreneurship important? I think social entrepreneurship is extremely important for the new generation as well as for our current generation, Mm -hmm. because what it's allowing people to do is to say, you can create or be a part of organizations that are making substantial change in different ways. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that is where we don't want to just have to join the normal standing company out there or, or just join a, you know, heartfelt nonprofit. We're looking for a marriage of strategic thinking and execution and also the heart. And that's where social enterprise really comes in and Mm -hmm. social entrepreneurship, which is we're looking to run a very smart business and be able to generate revenue. And at the same time, we're also looking to be able to make impact with the um, nonprofits that we're working with. And so, you know, it's that marriage of the heart, but also the sense of being strategic in generating revenue with companies. So how it works for us and every social enterprise is different, Mm -hmm. but our social enterprise works where we go into companies and help them with their corporate social responsibility programs. We help them with planning. We help them with the vetting. We help them with the disbursements of the funds all over the world. So it's trustworthy. They're giving to top-notch NGOs. Um, Very, very exciting that way. And that's all paid. The companies pay us to do that. And so then when we get paid to do that, we get to offer the free service of universal giving as a website. And that website, people can come and donate or volunteer in hundreds of projects all over the world. And so, you know, when you have a social enterprise and you make money, then you're able to offer a service for free. And to us, that's very exciting because Mm -hmm. then the universal giving public website, this basically matchmaker of matching up people who want to donate their time and donate their money then that's free. And so when you're running a social enterprise, you get to think creatively about things, set up creative systems, and really help scale this kind of innovation. And so, you know, social enterprise, social entrepreneurship is going to be so important for people's creativity, being a part of things that are innovative, and really helping change the world in that strategic and heartfelt way. Pamela, thank you so much for your answer. I I like the energy and you really made it clear why social entrepreneurship is important and the impact that somebody who focuses on social entrepreneurship can have, not only on their city or the region, but really on countries that can be thousands of miles away. And I have a question for you that has to do with, quote unquote, choosing the right cause to focus on. If somebody is here with you and I, Pamela, and they are thinking, I'm an entrepreneur, I have a business, I would like to be involved with social entrepreneurship, but there are so many different causes that I could focus on. And unfortunately, I can't focus on everything. Would you have any advice on how to kind of try to find the the right one? As far as, you know, finding the right opportunity, I think First of all, in a lot of ways, I think with the opportunities on Universal Giving, you can't miss all of these nonprofits we have very heartfelt relationships with. Mm -hmm. It's very sincere. The real point is, is that when you go in, it's that you've got this great relationship with a nonprofit. You're connecting with the people. And that's where the real joy and experience comes from, Jan. It's actually not about whether you're doing a hammer or whether you're cleaning up a river or whatever it is. It's actually a sense of it's actually that sense of, of being with people, mm-hmm. being with the community and building something together. Right. So then the hammer and the river kind of become ancillary in a lot of ways. But I would say, you know, it's important to try different things. You might be surprised by what you find and, and different opportunities that you like. I would say, go right into your heart, kind of improv style, immediately ask yourself what your greatest interest is. And if all of a sudden it comes up to you, I just want to make the earth greener, or I just want to be able to make sure that buildings are sustainable or whatever it might be, then you've got to go with that immediately, find an opportunity on universal giving and get involved. The biggest thing that I see happen with people is they get paralyzed and they think they want to find the perfect volunteer opportunity or Mm -hmm. know exactly what the experience is going to be like. And you're never going to know until you take that action, get over there and start volunteering. And then after that, Jan, really, it's about your heart and your openness to having a great experience. The volunteer opportunity may go exactly as planned, or it may not. (laughs) And so therefore, I think it's one of those things of having a mindset, always in life, as well as in the volunteer opportunities of what can I give to this experience? What can I gain and learn from it? But I really don't think it's something that is just specific to the issue. Yeah, I I think you touched upon a very interesting point because you said sometimes we are paralyzed because we kind of don't know where to start or or we kind of don't take the leap because we want it to be perfect. But you said we should go into this with the improviser mentality. And you also said something, Pamela, that I think was very, very powerful because you talked about 
doing something, building something together. So social entrepreneurship should be something that leads to collaboration and not just a a one-sided process or action. That's right. That's exactly right. And I think that's where you have to really, the 90% of having a successful volunteer experience is what happens in your mind. I'll tell you an interesting experience, one of my first volunteer opportunities when I was in Nicaragua, and I was there and, you know, the hammerheads broke, Jan, and so we didn't have any hammers to help build the school. And so many Americans were, you know, complaining and, mm-hmm. and freaking out that they couldn't get done what they were supposed to do over there. And the people just said to us, you Americans are all about doing, and we are about being, and we are mm. about being with people, and we are about relationships. And we want you to come be with us. And so we went to their tents, some of us, and had meals there. And there was sewage water running through the middle of the tents. And they also had TVs in it. I mean, it's Mm -hmm. quite an interesting experience. And, you know, it took two days for us to get a pickup truck and go find new hammers. It's not like you've got a hardware store around the corner. So it's a matter of then how do you connect? How do you work with the people? How do you help maybe help plant a garden? How do you help be with them, help clean up their homes, help take care of their kids? You know, I'll tell you, that's one of the things that's completely overlooked. I felt very blessed growing up to be able to take care of my three nephews and nieces almost every Saturday night. And that's one of the greatest ways you contribute to the world is within your own family. And so if you're on a volunteer opportunity and something comes through where you're not able to do the the task in front of you, I would just offer to take care of the villagers' kids because they often have a lot of children Mm -hmm. and children need that love and support. And it's so important. And so to me, you can be volunteering wherever you go. And so that's a mindset and mentality that happens everywhere you go. Thank you for sharing that story with us, Pamela. And I think the comment they told you back then, you know, we are all about being, I think definitely triggered something in all of you, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. And I think it triggers that element of purity of service, which is Mm. I'm not just doing this to put this on my resume. I'm not just doing this to look good. I'm not just doing this to talk about it at the cocktail party with my friends. And if you have that genuineness, you know, by all intended means, going to Nicaragua, we didn't finish the school. Mm -hmm. I could have come back and said it was a failure, Jan. I could have come back and said it was something that, you know, we didn't get done what we wanted. Mm -hmm. But instead, I came back with a very powerful lesson that hasn't left me, which was it's about the relationships. It's not just about getting things done. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I thank you really for sharing that with us because, I, I, as I said, I really think is a powerful message. But I have to ask you something else, Pamela. For your last point, you said we didn't finish the school. So I came back and, you know, I could have been this way or have this kind of thoughts or this kind of feelings, but I felt this other way. The question I have for you goes also beyond that. So it's more about life at 360 degrees. Do you have any advice on on some of the things to think about and do to really live a life full of happiness and true wealth? That is absolutely one of the most critical questions in life. And I couldn't agree more that it's something that we need to address every day. Right. True wealth is about love and about integrity and honesty. And when we have that, it shines in everything we do. And that is where the wealth comes from. And that is where the joy Mm -hmm. comes from because you have that peaceful sense of living. There's no anxiety within oneself. There's no sense of tumult. There's no sense of anxiousness whatsoever because you're so in line with your greatest sense of integrity, doing the right thing, being honest. And that way, you know, you're in the right pathway of life. You're in the right job. You're doing the right thing. You have the sense of like integrity and joy and love around you because you're living by love and you're living a trustworthy life. And that's wealth, Jan, because then you're just shining and you're just showing forth and all your talents start to come through and everyone around you circles around you, whether it's friends Mm -hmm. or families or coworkers. And it's like, they understand that sense of integrity and truth and love that you have. And they realize that and they celebrate that. And that's when, that's when people really progress in life and an organization, whatever it might be, is when they have that integrity and joy and love. And the thing about that is, is that doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. It's not nine to five. It's not when I feel like it. (laughs) Um, It's not, I need some, I'm allowed to have a bad mood day. You know, it's really a lot about not making excuses. Even in some of my toughest times, the first thing I'll do is call a friend 
to find out how they are. Mm -hmm. Not call a friend to say, oh my gosh, this is happening in my life. Call a friend, get myself out of my mindset, get myself out of my feelings, my hurt, my concern, and put my concern for the welfare of someone else. And about 80% of the time that I do that, Jan, when I'm done with listening to them or helping them, I don't need to talk about what I was concerned about. And so I think that's that wealth of that spirituality and that wealth of that sense of joy and giving and love that you are getting outside of yourself and to stop thinking so much about you. And true wealth is not thinking about you. Very powerful. Pamela, thank you so much. And I mean, you, you're hearing this. If you're here with Pamela and I, you're really getting some inspiration from her. But I really want you to take a moment and take it all in because what we're talking about here aren't things, as Pamela well said, aren't things that are about every now and then or, yeah, next year, are things that you should really think about on a regular basis every day and you should really put others before yourself. There is one question, Pamela, that I want to ask you that has to do with money mm -hmm. and giving back because somebody, and you've also written a post uh, about this and I'll link to that in the show notes as well because somebody may be, well, okay, I know I would like to give back, but I feel that I don't have the financial means. So do you have anything to say for, for somebody who may have that kind of mindset and he's here with you and I, Pamela? I'm short on money, but still, I would like to do something powerful, do something meaningful. I think money is probably in many ways the least impactful way to really change people's lives. Mm -hmm. The most impactful way is literally to give a smile and peace and be your best to everyone that you meet. And that is, what am I delivering in this conversation to this person today? How am I making their life easier? How can I give a greater sense of joy? And that is from everything from saying hi to the homeless person on the street who might be extremely mm -hmm. dirty and unwashed for two months without shower and black long nails and sputtering expletives at you. Absolutely. Still smiling and being peaceful as you walk by them. That's not necessarily the easy thing to do, mm -hmm. but it's a, it's a wealthy thing to do. And it's a way to give back and to give peace to them. That also means giving, you know, a peaceful sense to your manager, making sure that what you're doing is getting done is correct and being proactive and um, delivering things in advance of their deadline. That's a way to give back as well, too. Another way is making sure that you're calling your parents. You right. might not even have the best <laughs> relationship with your parents, or you might have a great relationship with them, but are you valuing and appreciating what they did for you? And I know this is going to sound kind of funny, but, you know, anytime I think about, you know, I have Sunday dinners with my parents and I do the dishes and mm -hmm. we joke that that's kind of my rent. And, <laughs> you know, one time I didn't really feel like doing the dishes and I thought about it and I timed myself and it took me on about six minutes. And I thought, I will never let my mind, even inside, complain about this again, <laughs> because it's six minutes of my time of serving my parents. And so everyone is sitting on a wealthy, abundant life right now. Mm -hmm. And they can give back right now by how they talk to people, how they work with people, how they think about things. Because if you have a clear and calm and loving and excited mindset about the world, that translates into everything you do. Absolutely, it does. So I'd work on that wealth in one's mind and start giving it out to the world. I mean, you you should you can set a goal for yourself. It doesn't matter if you don't have any money. You could set a goal for yourself of saying, I'm going to give out 20 smiles today. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. You have to smile at the dry cleaner, the bus. You, you probably don't want to smile. Maybe you don't want to smile at the bus driver, but you smile at the bus driver or smile at, you know, someone at work that, you know, you need to. I think that's the kind of thing that it's like you can set goals for yourself about wealthy giving that have nothing to do with money and will just send ripple effects of goodness into the world. Mm, yeah, I think <laughs> I think you made it crystal clear, Pamela, that we can have such a huge impact by doing things that we may consider small, but then when we sit down and think about those for a second, that can really help a person, like you said a homeless person sitting on the sidewalk and everybody's walking by ignoring the person as if it was just a pole or or something like that and we actually spend one second to acknowledge the person and say hey good morning and, and with a smile or something like that it's something that we don't do for our own good we do it because we want to impact people do our best to change the world one step at a time right Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. That's exactly right. And it is one step at a time. And you can't do can't change the world 
in even years or in a day, right. but you can contribute to a safer and better and more joyful world by being the best person you can be today. And that is by being calm and just filled with integrity, trust, loving, and just keep trying to live that way. And if you feel like you fall down, get back up again and do it again. And I think that's when people sometimes feel like they don't have purpose in life. I'm like, yes, you do. <laughs> you have mm. purpose every day, just in the way that you be as a person. Absolutely. Again, Pamela, you know, I couldn't agree more with what you said. And I actually want to to share a story with you, Pamela, and everybody who's here with you tonight. Because last year I attended podcast movement in Chicago. It was my first time in Chicago. And everybody said, yeah, when you go to Chicago, you have to try the Chicago style pizza. Mm -hmm. And I was staying, uh, so for the conference, it was in the business district. I love eating and I love pizza. So of course I was like, yeah, I have to, to try this pizza. And, and so I had my lunch and the pizza was really heavy. So I had a couple of slices left and I was like, well, I'm just gonna take it with me and I'll eat it later or something. And I started to walk back toward my hotel and I came across a homeless guy and everybody was ignoring him. Mm. And I thought to myself, I have a full stomach and I have something that I may be eating later today, number one. Number two, it's summer, it's hot, and nobody's taking a moment to just acknowledge the person, say hi, or ask me, excuse me, are you okay? Do you need any, any water or something? Because it's really hot and he was sitting in the sunlight. So I just crossed the street and I, I just approached him and I asked how, how he was, blah, blah, blah. And then I said, and by the way, are you hungry? And of course, he was very hungry. And I said, yeah, I, I have this pizza, but I don't. I said what the ingredients were. He was like, yeah, it's okay. And, and then, you know, he said, yeah, thank you so much. And then I walked back into my hotel. And as I was walking the lobby, I saw that we had uh, for hotel guests, we had like bottles of water. And then I, tr I walked back because I said to myself, a bottle of water is pretty insignificant for us when we can get it all the time. Tap water, sparkling water, whatever. What in my eyes could have been a very small thing as simple as grabbing a bottle of water, actually walk back a couple of minutes to address the person again and say, hey, by the way, here, here's some water, was so impactful. And, you know, for me personally, I have to say that was one of the biggest things that has impacted me in my entire life. And not so much for the materialistic aspect of things, but for the exchange me and this person had, because we really chatted for, for a couple of minutes. And I really felt that this person felt like that was probably one of his days, his best days ever. First and foremost, because somebody took a moment to have an exchange with them. So you said it early on when you talked about Nicaragua. It's not only about, ah, okay, what do I have to give others? But it's really about also, how can I be for others, right? That's right. That's exactly right. And it's how can you be present for others, regardless of what's happening in your own life? Mm -hmm. And I think regardless of whatever challenges you're facing and whatever challenges the person's facing, because sometimes in that situation, you could walk by a homeless person. No one seems to care and everyone's rushing by. Right. But you're the one who stopped, Jan. You're the one who stopped. You're the one who cared. And that not only changed the homeless person's life, but I bet it changed your life even more because it made you more conscious of what his or her life was like mm -hmm. and also just made you more compassionate. And we all need to slow down to do that. And it's not easy to do. Yeah, absolutely. And I personally believe, and I'm curious to hear your take on this, Pamela, that nowadays through technology, we can even do that simply by being at home whether it's by giving somebody, some, sending them some positive vibes or something like that, or, or how would you say technology can help us? I think really it's the technology can help us by making it very, very quick and easy to give and also allowing us to get the information that allows us to take action. So, you know, if you look at it, for example, with universal giving, you can make very quick transactions to give or volunteer. Mm -hmm. Or if you look at change.org, you can do petitions. And I think that is what the beauty of technology is, is getting excellent information to you very quickly, which is actionable. And I think that's really where we want to head in this world. I'll give you another example of that. Online with Christian Science Monitor, we have a partnership with them called People Making a Difference. Mm -hmm. And it's an article on all these people who are making a difference in the world. And at the bottom of it, it says, are you inspired? Here's a way to get involved. So what we're doing is pioneering this concept. 
of community-based journalism, which basically says journalists can get out there and write a story. And if people are inspired, then we can put giving and volunteer opportunities underneath it. So the technology, the stories that you're reading online, then underneath them, you can take action. So you can read about Sudan and then, boom, take action on Universal Giving's giving and volunteer opportunity. So I think technology brings that right to the fore of the reader. And I find that very, very powerful that you can read something and take action. And we didn't have that 10 years ago. Right. Yeah, you said it. We, we are so lucky to be in this day and age for so many reasons, but in particular, when we want to do our part to make the world a, a better place. For some people, this may be, well, that's exaggerating. No, I, I'm a person who really believes that we can really make a difference. And I know you think like that too. Yes, absolutely. Everyone can. And I think people have to change their mindset to think, oh, I don't have the time to do this. But you do. Even if you're a super busy mom and you've got two kids, if you're at Whole Foods or Safeway or wherever you shop or Trader Joe's, you can go pick up two apples rather than one apple. And as you're walking out, you can give an apple to a homeless person. Although that might not be the best example because I know that it's many homeless people don't have teeth, so it's not so easy on the apple. But yeah. you could use another example, let's say banana. But the point is, is that in your normal transactions of what you do every day, it absolutely is possible to buy two or to make the effort of a smile or whatever it might be to get people engaged in understanding that life is positive and you can make a difference and then they'll go do it for someone else. A homeless person might outreach to another homeless person or they might be kinder to another person leaving the store. I mean, everyone is impacted every time we do good. It's a ripple effect and it goes from person to person to person to person. You know, I think about that at Universal Giving a lot. I feel my job every day is not only to run the organization, to capitalize it, to make sure we're moving forward on new business and partnerships, to advance what we're doing. But equally, I think when my employees go home at night and they have the dinner table conversation, what will that be? Mm. Is it going to be, gosh, I can't believe this happened at work today? Or is it going to be, wow, my manager or my boss did the right thing today, was honest, had integrity, was joyful? Because you are someone who impacts that dinner conversation and that mm -hmm. dinner conversation impacts the spouse or the partner and that impacts the next person, impacts the next day and the next day. So I'm always thinking about that. Who am I at work or in my day to day? And how does that impact dinner conversations? Amen to that. So you heard it is really a ripple effect. And Pamela, to wrap up this very interesting and inspiring conversation with you, I have to ask you a question that has to do with the beginning of the year working hard, change, and all those things. Because oftentimes when we begin a, new, a year, we're like, ah, okay, we set up all these New Year's resolutions and so forth. And whether we stick by, <laughs> by the plans we lay out or not, that's a different story. But to wrap it up, do you have any final piece of advice for everybody who's here with you and I on something they can do in 2017 to make the world a better place? You know, I would really focus on random gifts and giving. Mm -hmm. I think that on Universal Giving, we've got a, just a ton of great gift packages on there. And I, I wouldn't wait for a birthday. I wouldn't wait for the anniversary. I wouldn't wait for Valentine's Day. I would just get on there today and give a gift package of, you know, feeding a family for $25 in Sudan to someone for just no reason at all, except for the fact that you just want to appreciate them. Because I think what happens is we get so celebrated around a certain holiday or a certain reason. And instead, what we want to do is make sure that we've got that giving mentality at all times. So important we have that giving mentality at all times. And I think that we need to do it at not just the times that are celebrated as a federal holiday. And so I would just say, just, just start that giving and start doing it just now and today, not because of an external reason. And that's when your life really changes, when you are just becoming a giver, because it's the right thing to do and because it's in your heart. Amen to that. I want to end on that note because, Pamela, really, you have provided us with so much inspiration and motivation. I know you really motivated me. And I want to say, first of all, thank you so much for being here. And thank you for what you and the rest of the Universal Giving team do. I really, really appreciate every single thing you do. Oh, thank you so much, Jan. We're so grateful. Thank you again for having us and for all your positivity and all you're doing with this podcast is spreading so much joy and help to so many other people across the world. And we can't thank you enough for that. And it was a joy speaking to you today. And you already are a giver and you're an inspiration to me as well. 
We are back. Pamela, again, thank you so much for what you and the rest of the Universal Giving team do and for being here with us. And you heard it. I said it at the beginning and I want to wrap up by mentioning that again. First of all, the show notes page is over at yanilunga.com for a slash episode 194. I want to wrap up this episode by doubling down on the importance of the topic of today's episode. So if you've been here with me before, you heard me and the guest experts talk about many different things, lead generation, branding, Instagram marketing, online courses, this and that. But today it was about giving back. It was about thinking about social entrepreneurship. So regardless of what your business goals are, please take a moment to think about how you can give back through your business and through what you do day after day, week after week. This is it for today. Thank you so much for making Pamela and I part of your day. And make sure to be back next week for episode 195 of the 360 Entrepreneur Podcast. Thank you for listening to the 360 Entrepreneur Podcast. For more tips and tools, head over to www.johnilunga.com.